Hi and welcome to this video. In this video, we will understand the most important topic and concept of DevOps that is containers. You might have also heard it in the name of Docker. So let's understand it one by one and I hope at the end of this video, you will be able to get the idea of what is container and what is containerization and what role does Docker play in it. Okay, so let's start with a brief about VMs, virtual machines. Okay, so let's say we have this uh, virtual machine here. We have an hypervisor and we have OS installed on this. So this is VM1, VM2, VM3 and that is VM4. So let's say it's a 100 GB capacity of uh, your local physical machine and you have 100 cores. Suppose this VM1 is taking 25 GB and each of the VMs that we have created over our physical machine is taking 25 GB. So let's say we are running with four apps. Okay. And each is taking 25 GB. So one app is taking, let's say 25 GB and on the best day, on the best day, the load that it can handle, consider it to be the maximum. But the problem with VMs is that even when they are being utilized to the maximum, let's say only 10 GB of storage is utilized. When the app is on a very high traffic, 10 GB of storage is utilized. So 15 GB is wasted. I'm sure you are getting the idea. We have talked about VMs and I'm discussing currently problem with VMs. Now similarly for each VM, 10 GB, 10 GB, 10 GB. So total uh, 40 GB at least, at least 50% of space is not utilized. Since they are logical units and completely separated from each other, we cannot share the resources in between them because we have already fixed the resources. That's the problem of VM. You have fixed the amount of resource that is compute, that is RAM, that is storage. You have fixed that for one VM. So if that VM is not able to completely utilize that, the resource, the storage or the CPU is wasted. Now what's the solution for that? The solution for that comes in the name of something called containers. What containers are is they are a lightweight package contains application dependencies and certain libraries. What they does is they are also logical units separated from each other, but they do not take the fixed space or RAM or CPU. They do not have in, even have their own OS. They share it from the physical machine they are installed on. So let me just draw and explain you how you can create containers. So the one way to create containers is, let's say you have an OS installed. You put an hypervisor. OS here and you directly put Docker. So this Docker technology is something that provides you the capability of to your system so that they can be used as a container technology as well. So this Docker, this will create containers. Let's say we have created four containers over here. That is one way of creating container. But more uh, famous way to create container is Suppose we have this physical machine and uh, we call it as VM EC2, EC2 is mainly that is being used in AWS. Then we install Docker engine on top of EC2. That, that's more famous way. I'll let you know why this is much better. And 
अपॉन दैट यू इंस्टॉल कंटेनर्स सो नाउ व्हाट्स द एडवांटेज ऑफ दीज कंटेनर्स दीज कंटेनर्स दे डू नॉट फिक्स सम रैम और स्टोरेज फॉर देयर फंक्शनिंग दे टेक इट फ्रॉम द ओएस ऑफ द वर्चुअल मशीन और द ईसी टू दे आर बीइंग रन ऑन सो दे यूज मिनिमल ओएस ओके सो इट इज सेविंग योर स्टोरेज फर्स्ट इट इज सेविंग योर रैम it is saving the extra need for license to install operating system because in vms if you are using four windows then you need to buy four license for those four machines separately but in containers it is not as so it will share the resource from the host os system on which it is being run upon okay now i am sure you have understood the problem with vms and how containers have clearly worked on is this issue and have make this problem go away so now let's understand why are containers let's understand we have understood ways of creating containers let's understand why containers so the containers uh, you can uh, write first major point you can write is they are lightweight why they are lightweight because they are just a package that consists of an application plus some dependencies plus some libraries needed to run that code on that machine instead of directly running the code on the virtual machine we have created a container environment that container environment is just an application that is wrapped with some system dependencies and some softwares installed in it okay so first point is lightweight and if you compare this with vm let's say you have a vm and you have created a snapshot out of it okay now the snapshot out of it will be at least 1 gb or 1.5 gb so what is a snapshot snapshot is basically suppose if i am running a virtual machine and somebody wants to replicate that virtual machine including all the packages software and dependencies that are running in my pc or my virtual machine they can create a snapshot out of it and then they can install that same virtual machine using that snapshot similarly for containers we have images but those images are around 100 mb to 200 mb so they are actually really lightweight okay now let's try to understand what is the life cycle of a container so uh, basically in docker technology docker is just a name of the company since it became so famous so we usually start calling containers as docker containers okay so whenever you are reading something about containers you will find the term docker container being used a lot but docker is a company that has developed this container technology but it is not the only company that has developed containers you have podman and other container technologies as well i am sure you getting the idea of what is vm and how containers solve the problem and what is container now let's try to understand what is the life cycle of uh, a docker container so the life cycle is pretty simple you write this docker file suppose you want to dockerize an, any application you write this docker file you tell the instruction that what is all that you need what dependencies or what package you need to run this application then you actually build that file then after build you will get some image of the file and once you run the image you will get the container this container will be so this container will be just like a vm it will be logical and separated and only be running your application code inside it okay but remember one thing that you can also make a image out of a container if you have a running container you can also make an image so this is like both ways okay so i feel that we have covered everything about containers in this video and i hope you understood a lot from this video again thanks for watching and see you in the next one